The floor has germs, the cabinets have germs, the stores have germs. Reward screens, however, don't have germs. Nice. Hi, my name is KaiCast and I'm a germaphobe. Watch me as I impose my phobia on a Borderlands 1 Vault Hunter to see if we can beat Borderlands with only quest rewards. Before we begin this scientific endeavor, let's lay out the rules. Rule number one. I can only use items I receive through the mission complete screen. Rule number two. I cannot use my action skill, melee attacks or vehicle weapons to harm anyone. Accidental princess Dianaing is allowed but not encouraged, nor can I profit from it. And rule number three. I'm forbidden to re-roll quest rewards to get better items. Also, the use of DLC items is banned. With the rules etched in stone, let's start this adventure. First up, I had to choose one of these popular Public transport users, homeless vet, chain smoking alcoholic, Russian cage fighter, or a young girl trying to make it in the big city by finding the vault. I chose her for her smaller hitboxes and better established backstory. Jeff the killer informs us of the vault, we thank the bus driver and are ready to become a star in New Haven. With nothing to my name but a pipe dream and a macaroni hat, I embarked on this journey. I facepalmed the rebel rousers that were making Firestone into even more of a hellhole than it already was. With a cool Dutch angle for that cinematic feel so Zed could open up his butcher shop. Was I rewarded for the gentrification of the neighborhood? No, because the relationship between Borderlands 1 and its players is an awful a lot like the one between a corporation and its interns. Even though you do all the work, you almost always get paid in experience. How generous. Hey Claptrap, I kinda saved your life, can you maybe spare a shield? No, oh, uh, okay. Hey TK, I got rid of those stray dogs, booped the snoots of the bandits and found a four course dinner for you. Do you have maybe an old gun lying around that I can use? No, and you want me to kill nine toes without shields, skills, abilities and guns. Yeah, that sounds reasonable for a crazy person. It wasn't actually too bad, one of the dogs had Colonial Marines AI and Nine Toes was a really good actor and I got the dramatic shot of him dying in only two tries. But it still wasn't enough to get me anything, it literally cost me an arm, leg and blackmail to get a shotgun and a shield. And you know what cute little thing I learned about quest rewards in this game? That levels don't mean anything. Well done son, completing a level 7 quest, here's a level 4 shield that's worse than the stuff you can find in the trash. But I can't complain, it's not like there are only 3 reward shields that don't go higher than level 10 because that I would consider to be slightly problematic and a bit inhumane. The lag got me a shotgun which means my friendship with melee has ended, gun is my new best friend. Shotgun and a bunch of flowers got me another one, Mr. Sniper. Despite my lack of skill, uh, I mean even with zero weapon proficiency, the sniper made quick work of Bonehead. And with the keys to his car, we met Max now. What a day. What a lovely day. I spent the next hour hauling ass across Pandora's litter box trying to get better gear. The sniper I built out of random parts held together by tape and spit was worse than the one I had. The shield I got for flipping switches was somehow a lower level than mine. But fortune smelt upon me when I entered the Thunderdome. The blood gods were satisfied with the cats and dogs Peter didn't want and bestowed me with a level 10 shield. Something in the realm of decent for now. It immediately got intensively used making my way to the mine key, which was not fun. Crits were the only thing kinda impressing the Jason Voorhees, sniper ammo ran out like alcohol on an open bar wedding and getting headshots with this thing requires at least a PhD in physics or math, or you can just run past them like a little sissy baby. Roid Rage was a blast from the past, reminding me of that one kid constantly noob tubing in modern warfare. How do you counter that? Well, by waiting for his mom to bust in his room. <laughs> So I can 360 him in peace while they have their nice mother-son screaming duel. What is your problem? You are my problem! Making the mine key mine. Off to that and getting a bunch of rocks. Now they're minerals! Uh, I mean minerals for Asex Raider. It was time to treat myself with a new gun. I was kinda getting bored of the sniper, so I want something fresh, something new, something like a combat rifle, yeah! With three parts found and the fourth one looked up on Google, I got a high-powered semi-automatic rifle with a scope and a six bullet mag. Thanks reward screen for the intense shaking up of the gameplay I longed for. Sledge dug himself in the headstone mine so I headed over to him. I slowly wall hugged my way towards him. So good Marcus Phoenix would be proud. This is it, Jeff gave me some last minute tips. He has a powerful shield you will need to wheel down before you can hurt him. Don't let him touch you. And then the fight was on. I kind of forgot that his shield recharges. 
Must be nice having an on-level shield that recharges without needing coffee and hour and various pills. And standing in a 10 foot radius of sledge gives you knees weak, arms are heavy, you're on the floor already. Second try. I ran away from him like he had the disease that would hopefully date this video very soon, so like avian flu. And shot him every chance I got so that his shield bar would stay nice and depleted. Just like mine. With all my brain power allocated to keep those things in mind, I didn't register that going for sledge's crit spot was a dumb idea. Despite my pinpoint accuracy and the dead shield decree I had for breakfast, the bloody game denied me my crits. And of course his helmet had the highest damage reduction of his entire body. So after playing ring a ring around the rosy for long enough to make me feel sick, my good guns were running empty. It's you and me now, shotgun. But that's okay, because do you really need anyone else? Apparently not. Yes, we did it, and with we, I mean I did it, and with it, I mean Beat Sledge obtained part of the vault key and beat off writer's block. Hopefully. On my way to Zed, Randy tries to shoehorn in and have baked antagonist, but I ain't having none of it. The bag of meat and bones was not happy that I killed his main supplier of patience. The glass mold he coughed up upped my shield by a whopping 23 points. With the death of Sledge, I was permitted to go to yet another sandpit to help the locals wipe their own bottoms. Since you're probably not Tessa Palmer, I'm not going to bore you with all the fun times I had of going to a place to kill some dudes or go to a place to get something or the rare exciting mission of going to a place kill some dudes and get something. Just a couple. Skagzilla was something I wasn't even remotely ready for my first attempt. But with the rocket launch I got from clearing out the racetracks and the revolver I cobbled together it was still a monumental challenge of my patience. Which was most generously rewarded with a level 13 elephant gun. I got hit by struck by various cars but they couldn't outrun my bullets because they didn't have pumped up kicks. With all the bottoms in the doll headlands cleaned it was time to wipe away the last shit stain residing here. Bad Mel. You would think that fighting rocket launching cars and a fan club on foot would be hard and I thought so too after shedding my mortal shell a fair few times. But if you stand in the middle of the elevated circle, Mad Mel can't or won't for some reason shoot you. But don't step off it or the rockets will find your way again. After the game was done puking its guts out from my spinning, I finally got to New Haven. <laughs> this is not the city I dreamed of making it big in. In the town I picked up some quests, re-energized the claptrap unit who gave me a backpack upgrade, <laughs> like the game would ever give me enough items to fill the thing up. And a pre-offscreen killed Elena Pierce told me that Tennis was put far far away in containment to prevent another e-girl outbreak. Old Haven is still uninhabitable after the Scott Pilgrim vs the World incident, so the necessary precautions were made. Tennis told me that Crazy Earl had the second part of the key. That's all very well, but first I went to scavenge in SMG, no chance of that thing being a high powered semi automatic gun with a 6 bullet mag and a slow reload speed, right? Oh, thank god. Earl wouldn't open his crusty old man lips for anything less than bloodshed and alcohol. The ingredients for his famous Bloody Marys. Apparently he sold the piece to Crom, owner of Crom's Valley. His tower defense game was too strong for my XP malnourished body to handle, so I went back and did some side quests. Killed Moltres, who was worth a pretty good shotgun. Gave a second serving of dogs to the blood gods. Helped Marcus with sustaining his weapon monopoly. And checked in on TK Baha. Oh, 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 what happened? At least we can take solace in the fact that when we die, we get reanimated in downloadable content. With a few more levels to my name, it was time to take on Crooked Krom. My tactic to get through the third section was to drive my car to the respawn point, die, get back up again and shimmy on over to his canyon. Where Krom and his lackeys gave me so many Dutch angles that it even made the movie Thor say. Isn't that a bit much? They did it by taking advantage of my almost non-existing shield, weak weapons or my own stupidity. Beating Chrome followers was much like building football stadiums. Keep throwing bodies at it until it's done. It only took a couple grenades to take him out for dinner in Hell's Kitchen. I brought the key piece I found in Chrome's chest to tennis. Got hit by the classic Borderlands mission of whoopsie poopsie, the bridge doesn't work, go fix it dum dum. Luckily I only needed to assist the claptrap with his terrible pet finding. Then it was time for the Janus Town anime filler arc. Janus Cop wasn't too difficult when I used my galaxy brain to put standing around the corner so Janus can shoot me and rockets have splash damage together some 20 odd times his brother however was fed breast milk spiked with G fuel and red meat instead of surviving on a soy based diet at this point in time I just wasn't powerful enough to take on this prime time beefcake I needed to bulk up on experience points and items first I went to the underground earth kingdom killed its king and nicked his stuff then I went to a place and turned on beacons for reasons clear to people who know how these 
things work. Then I went to the harbor to catch me some sea protein, spent at least 20 minutes trial and erroring them out of the water and I still have no idea what worked. Also I blew a few ships to smithereens. And those two activities rewarded me with a rocket launcher and summoning materia. Back at Taylortown the rockets still hurt as much as they did an hour ago. But in that hour I became much wiser. Those who do not have the means to tackle the subject at hand need to be smart. So I looked up the weaknesses that a block of testosterone might have. Increased aggressive behavior, hmm, that could work. I aggroed him away from his turret and was on the receiving end of a splash fast bonanza. But just like real life, rocket launches aren't always successful and my sniper kept Capitalized on that very well. With this time wasting arc done, the next thing on my checklist is challenge overcome. What? You mean the rack hive? Pfft, this is going to be easy. It also very much wasn't. I can't dispose of a rag dive attack due to the lack of damage output or pathetic magazine size of my guns. And it was not like my shield was able to take some of the hurt away. Sitting in a tent somewhat safe from the rags was also not an option, as the hive would use his just woke up from hibernation breath to flush me out so the rags can finish me off. I tried, like, a lot, but it couldn't be done, so I used the dark and forbidden arch forged in the surface of old school runescape. Safe spotting. I plonked my ass down by the coast, which was barely out of rag reach, and unloaded very various piles of ammo into his back, until the weight of the lead broke its leg bones and that in turn impaled his vital organs or something like that. But I don't know, there was a mountain formation in the way and my eyes were suffering from image retention. After watching a bunch of these videos, I could finally find the third key piece and was ready to snatch up the last one from Baron Flint. Needing to destroy bandit patrols before you can infiltrate Thor was a genius evil plan to get me dizzy and lightheaded for the fight with Flint. And that's the reason why I perform so unlike my normal not nauseous self. When when the sick wore off I was able to shoot him in the head, the sick however came back and set up shop in my stomach because that backstabbing tennis strut decided that she was going to make it big in the city by finding the vault. The audacity, that was my very original plan, trademarked even. On my way to tennis Commander Steel forgot to put her mic on and sent three of her finest bed warmers after me. Master McCloud was a nice change of pace from the insta kill hit scan weapons to the slow moving ball of easy avoidable death. Deep within the Crimson Lands hideout I found Tennis behind bars, crossed by Steel who stole the vault and is now trying to make it big in the Atlas Corporation by opening the vault. What a fresh idea. I don't know what it was. Pity, a common enemy, or the inability to think straight caused by the blood loss from all those knives in our backs, but Tennis and I, we are going to make it big. Together. If we want to do that we have to make sure that the entire planet can hear us, so important things first, let's reactivate the echo comm system baby and spread the deeds of the siren sisters. But Rarix D, I'm not a siren Lamau. Oh boy, just you wait. Activating the consoles was somewhere between tedious and please god make it stop. The go to a place, kill some things and press a button was wearing thin after a few dozen hours. Also the dollar store space marines were quite strong so I ran past most of them. Went in and out the buildings like a dude who's not confident in his pull out game. With the net back online it was time to find steel. The path to her was filled with juicy XP pinatas fighting the lands and sometimes me. Finally a party where I get included, even if it's involuntarily it's quite nice. Having no shock or corrosive weapon made dealing with the guardians quite annoying. And going from deserts to snowy mountain top was a shock for my computer. Should have dressed it warmer so it wouldn't freeze. But fear not, disregarding everything and everyone and just focusing on making it to the next checkpoint was still a viable strategy. Ah yes, my favorite cutscene, repurposed character model gets penetrated by amateur squid. Well I say squid, but it seemed more like a bullet sponge to me. So after every failed attempt I had to go back to New Haven to resupply. Also my shield was showing its age. So much so that you need carbon dating analysis to see how long ago it was relevant. But even with crow's feet the depth of the Mariana Trench. It with help from Medkit helped me long enough in the game to fill up the summoning meter so I could call in the Eidolon Leviathan. Taking the vault beast down in a tidal wave of rockets. Flushing it back into the portal from whence it came. And with that I beat Borderlands with only quest rewards. Thank you for watching this video till the end. If you liked the video and want to help me out, like it, subscribe and pester your friends and family into doing the same. Once again, thank you for sticking till the end. I hope to see you soon.